Hey, welcome back to another video about mining Bitcoin at home with solar panels. My name is Brian, and this video is gonna make a lot of the past ones kind of come together because I've been running a three month test of how much surplus my panels are producing above the energy needs that my house has. And then we're using just that amount of surplus to mine Bitcoin. And now we're to the point of where we're actually turning on the miners. So today is April 14th, and we've been running a test for February, March, and April of how much surplus per day the panels are creating, how much surplus per month they're creating. And so we're gonna head to the computer in a second and I'll show you the numbers from February 1st up to this point, April 14th. We'll see how many we're at and then we'll turn the miners on and we'll, uh, we'll make the video at the end of the month to kind of show here's a solid three month test of how much surplus there was and how much Bitcoin is mined. So that's kind of the goal. I'm relatively new to being a solar owner. Um, this is, I haven't, I've only lived in this house not very long and so I haven't been a solar owner very long. But what I've realized is the net energy compensation rate, the net surplus compensation rate is not a fair market rate. Like in the state of California, there's not a free market for energy and SoCal Edison, my utility provider, is basically the only buyer that I'm able to sell my surplus to. And currently they only offer about three and a half cents per surplus kilowatt hour. And so we know as Bitcoiners that we can make more money than that mining Bitcoin with it. And so what I'm doing is I have a cents meter in my panel, and you, there's a previous video of installing that in the panel that measures how much solar is produced every day, how much my house uses every day, and then what we're doing now is we're running the numbers and we're gonna mine with that surplus and show how much more money you can make mining Bitcoin above the non-free market rate that SoCal Edison is offering to buy the surplus back from us. So yeah, let's hop over to the computer. Okay, so here we are at the computer and we've got February, March, April, and then a summary tab. So here we are at February and these are exports from SenseMonitor. So the SenseMonitor measures um, total usage of the entire house per day and total solar production per day. And so you can see, I, um, I deleted a lot of the lines that we didn't need from the export. So if you have a sense, um, it doesn't come out exactly like this, but I deleted the lines that weren't necessary. And so you can see from February 1st, total usage, total production, February 2nd, total usage, total production. And so I summed them all up over here, monthly usage, monthly solar production, surplus for February, same thing for March, surplus for March, same thing for April. And so right here, we're again, we're up to April 14th. So we're running a three month test, February, March, and April. We're up to April 14th today. And so as of April 14th for February 1st, to April 14th, here's our total surplus. So this total surplus of 555 kilowatt hours is uh, what we're seeking to use up with Bitcoin mining and demonstrate how it pays higher than the net surplus compensation rate. And I'll hop over to a couple other tabs and show you the other software we're using. Here's the dashboard for the power distribution unit that we're using. So we're using a Synlink PDU. This one's made specifically for Bitcoin mining. We did an unboxing of this. And what I love about this one is it has a remote on and off so I can um, control it from anywhere in the house. And then also it measures the exact kilowatt hours um, that the miner's using. So this is how we're gonna make sure that we use exactly the amount of surplus that we have. So let's go ahead and turn it on. Perfect. And then right here, you can see energy accumulation since last reset. We just did a reset right now. So we're starting from scratch and we've used 0.01 kilowatt hours. You can see the active power reading over there. All right. And then just want to show you this. We're using Brains firmware to upgrade the miner so we can get a little more hashing power out of it. We're using slush pool and you can see that the miner is on and feeding to the pool. Currently getting 16 and a half tera hash. You can see the watts being used and the chip temperature. So we're live and going. Okay, it's now Monday and we're gonna shoot a little bit of an update here. We've used 130 kilowatt hours of our surplus that we're trying to use up. And we're trying to get to 550. And so here's just a quick update. We started the experiment on Friday, it's now Monday. And so we've used 130 kilowatt hours and we'll switch over here to the mining pool. And you can see yesterday we got about 10,000 sats sitting in our unconfirmed rewards. We've got about 5,700 sats. And you can see this is how it looks on the back end of slush pool. So the pool will find a block. That's how much hash power the total pool has. Here's how much hash power I was contributing. Here was the block value of the 6.25 
plus the little bit of uh, um, transaction fees that are in there, and then it's our part of the um, reward. And so you can see 762 sats for that one, 767 sats for that one, 858. So that all adds up to, we've got about 17,967 sats so far. So now, again, this quick rough math, let's just do a quick rough math uh, update. So for 130 surplus hours, times that by three and a half cents, this is what I would be getting for my surplus energy if I was selling back to SoCal Edison. And again, remember, you only top up with SoCal Edison once a year. So this is on paper $4.55 that SoCal Edison owes me next December. So and then what do we know about the inflation numbers? Like when the currency dollars are losing to goods and services actively every day, the pennies that you're earning are losing to goods and services. So instead, we come over here, we've earned 17,967 sats in real time. So not only is the exchange rate, and then when you exchange it, exchange, check out the exchange rate over for dollars, you can see that straight up 455 to 721 you're winning but you're also earning the sats in real time instead of having to wait until the end of the year to be topped up. So yeah, that's a quick update. Use 130 kilowatt hours so far. We'll keep trucking along and uh, keep breaking it down. Now I'm coming at you on April 25th with uh, another update and I just wanna show you, you can see we're at 460 kilowatt hours and one thing I changed was instead of running just one miner, we're now running two miners. So I have Brian one turned on you can see it right now, that live reading, and then we just have Brian turned on, and you can see this live reading. And so you can see how the active power at 1800 watts, 1870 watts, is a little bit higher than it was in the previous clips. So because something we've already learned is that, so to chew up all 550 surplus hours um, at one go is actually pretty tough. Um, well, so with the hardware that I have, with the hardware that I have and the outlets that I have, chewing through 550 surplus hours and waiting for three months of time to then try to top up is actually too long of waiting. So as we move forward with different experiments, I'm going to try to top up maybe monthly or weekly so it's less having to run at a time. Um, but we're, we're beginning to mess around with the automation too. And so you can see I have it turned on to say when we hit 550 kilowatt hours, this is just going to turn off both outlets. We've reached the summary of the video. So thank you so much for watching so far. Thank you so much for watching the other solar Bitcoin mining videos we've been putting out. Please hit the like button so that other people can find out about how to use Bitcoin mining to get paid more for their surplus and be able to afford to build out more and more uh, solar. Because I think it's really positive for individuals to be energy producers. And so I've been having a super like, fun time with this. And so I wanted to show you my solar timeline, like as an energy producer. So, and then we're gonna get into the, the numbers of just the, the final numbers of the experiment. So in December, I moved into this house and owned a solar for the first time. In January, the system got turned on about midway through the month. So February, uh, 2022 was the first full month I had of production. So as I've been quoting kind of my rough daily surplus numbers, I've been realizing that as I've been going February, March, April, my solar production has actually been going up, which which makes sense because I've been, you know, I had started my journey, you know, during the winter months and now I'm moving into spring, moving into summer. And so, but that's the reason why my first three months experiment of this, I wanted it to be February, March, and April. So yeah, February was the first full month of production. And then the beginning of this video, was shot on Friday, April 15th, but our last full day of data was Thursday, April 14th. So the, the check-in data that we had at the beginning of the video is from February 1st to April 14th, about two and a half months. And that's how we arrived at that approximate 550 hours of uh, surplus that we wanted to try to try to use up. And so, yeah, Friday, April 15th, we turned on the miners, started this video. You watch the Monday, April 18th update. You watch the Monday, April 25th update. On Wednesday, April 27th, our smart PDU uh, hit the surplus number that we typed into it and then turned the miners off. So we used exactly 550 kilowatt hours of surplus. And then I'm coming at you today, Monday, May 2nd, with a full summary of the numbers. 
And next, what I want to do is you'll see in a second with the April summary, I there was no surplus for April because I how it was trying to use up the surplus of February and use up the surplus of March. And so April, we wouldn't have a surplus. What I want to do next is I want to try to get my monthly surplus numbers as close to zero as possible. So I want to actually take it down to a weekly um, running of the miners rather than like letting surplus stack up and use it. And so through the smart PDU that we have, I think I'm going to be able to say like, here's my average weekly surplus number. And so go ahead and run for that amount of kilowatt hours, you know, every Monday. And so we'll just be using up surplus, using up surplus every Monday. But so yeah, that's a little bit of the journey. I was saying different dates throughout the video. So wanted to uh, lay out the whole uh, calendar for you. So here we are. Reminder, this is where we were February 1st to April 14th. Here's that 550 number. Here's what the total for April looked like. So remember, this is an export from the sense monitor. So we used 212 hours over our solar production during the month of April to try to use up our surplus. And here is what an export of the mining rewards from slush pool look like. You can see the block height that the Bitcoin was found at. You can see what the how many miners this is the total hash rate of everyone in the pool and then this was my hash rate and then so you can see the user reward and so for those new to bitcoin um one this is eight decimal places and this final one is a sat so this was 749 sats three sats one sat 172 sats 44 sats 286 sats and so we add all that up and you get 104,538 sats or 0.001 Bitcoin. So about 100,000 sats. And here's the full summary. So here's just the total numbers, what it looks like from February, March, and April of 2022. My house combined with the mining used up 1,574 kilowatt hours. So of that, 550 of them were kilowatt hours. And total solar production of February, March, and April was 1,791 kilowatt hours. So you can see we mined for 550 kilowatt hours and we still had 216 kilowatt hours of surplus remaining. And so that's what's leading me to my next experiment of wanting to do a weekly top up so that we can get this surplus remaining number like right at zero. That's the ultimate goal is to get it right at zero. And the reason for that is because as we've covered throughout the video, like, look, if we had kept all 550 kilowatt hours and sold them back to SoCal Edison at the end of the year, they would have paid us three and a half cents. That would have been about $19. And again, none of this takes into account like inflation and like the dollar losing purchasing power to goods and services. So even with Bitcoin at 38,500, which is kind of reduced from the all time high, and we understand that. And a lot of people talk about the volatility of Bitcoin, but you can still even see that even on a super sell off, you're still making double what the utility company is offering you for your energy. So yeah, that's a summary. Just like even with Bitcoin selling off, you still can make double what the utility is offering for you and you make the money in real time, in real time. So yeah, that's it. Like super thanks to everyone who's helped me with this. Uh, love the Simlink PDU, excited to keep trying that. Love the Brains software. And so if you're a home miner, definitely recommend Brains. And then definitely love the Sense team. Like I wanna connect more with the Sense team um, using Sunrun solar panels. Um, and yeah, like this is this has been really cool. So super appreciate you watching. Please hit the like button. Comment below if you're a solar miner or if you have solar panels or if you are a Bitcoin miner not on solar just so that we can continue um, just networking. So thanks so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.